Welcome to Her Life Unscripted Podcast, inspiring burnt out, stressed out, and stretched thin women to embrace the unscriptedness of life. Hosted by Anna Osborne. Hello, ladies, and welcome to Her Life Unscripted, episode 76. I am your host, Anna Osborne. Oh, I'm back. It's been about a week since the Shine Retreat, and I have to say it was really intense coming back. For all of you listening, I'm sure you're aware of the just devastating tragedy that took place in Las Vegas with the mass shooting that occurred, and that happened late at night of the last, the night that the Shine Retreat wrapped. We wrapped about noon and the, the shooting took place about 10 p.m. all Pacific Standard Time. And I'm, I'm, I'm without words. It's just devastating of what happened. And I know for myself that I knew a number of people that were there and have connected with them and they've shared their stories in, in ways of needing to talk about it. And I've allowed them to do that and been just honored that they've wanted to share it with me and that they've reached out for support. But what I know is that attending the, that retreat with all of the women that were there was such an emotional experience for me as the one of the facilitators. It was just really emotional to see so many women doing such amazing work. And I was emotionally raw afterwards, right, of just being able to hold the space and just the power of the women that were there. And so when news of the shooting came in and when I you know, started realizing that I had people there that I cared about that were there, brought it even closer to home. I think that's the thing that we do with devastation as we try and distance ourselves, right? So if I, if I didn't know anybody there, it feels more removed. Or if it's not somewhere that I've visited before, I feel more removed, right? All these just very ridiculous ways that we try to kind of armor back up and feel more safe. But the truth is I wasn't able to armor back up after this. And being so emotionally raw from the weekend and having that tragedy strike it hit me much deeper because I was so emotionally open. And so it's been a week and I'm still very, very raw and emotional about it. And I don't have any answers. And I know you're not tuning into the show today trying to figure out what Anna's answers are, or what is her perspective on this, right? But I have to put words to it because it's something tragic, something horrible that happened in our world. And I think that in some ways we're so numb to this stuff happening that we kind of stop talking about it. We're very interested in, in who did it. And to me, it's so much less important of why you did it or why they did it as it is of how do we make it stop? How do we help people heal, especially after something like this? And so, you know, I wasn't planning on having this one week post show really addressing the shooting, but I think that I can't not talk about it, right? So the words that I want to put to it are not about the tragedy as much as what do we do with the tragedy? How do we continue to move forward? And, you know, last week in the episode, the the last day of the Shine Retreat, last week's episode, I talked about this kind of brightening, this awakening that no matter what, dawn always comes, right? The sun always rises. And I do believe that light conquers dark. And so although I don't have the answers in any capacity around this tragedy and around these people that lost their lives and, and just the devastation and the trauma that all of those surviving are, are, are now going through and now burdened with and the families that are grieving. I don't have answers for that, but I have to believe that dawn will always come. I have to, I have to believe that the sun will always rise. And I don't know exactly what that means to me right now in this moment as I say it, but I know I believe it. And I know I believe that light conquers dark. And so for many of the people that I spoke to afterwards and kind of just being on social media and reading the comments and the commentary going on, there is a great sense of hopelessness that a lot of us are feeling. And hopelessness is toxic. Hopelessness prevents us from moving forward. Hopelessness justifies inaction. And that to me, my friends, is very, very scary. Inaction is frightening to me. I know I've shared on the podcast before, but one of my biggest pet peeves (laughs) is people believing that one person can't make a difference. It absolutely drives me bonkers. And so, you know, I've shared this example before, but somebody throwing a piece of garbage on the ground and say, yeah, what, what difference does it make? 
It's just one piece of garbage, right? It won't make that big of a difference. Or one person saying, I'll throw my recycle in the trash. What difference does it make if I don't recycle this one thing? I'm just one person. And what I want to tell you right now is you are one person. You are one of the most important people in the world because your voice, your action, your hope, your relationships, all of those have the ability to create change. And you, my friend, have the ability to make positive change or negative change with that because you are one person and one person can make an exceptional difference in this world. And when I talk about light conquering dark, I mean lots of things by that. But what I mean is that by us taking action about not letting senseless, horrific things happen, steal our hopefulness, we have the ability to conquer the darkness. And I get for some of you that are listening right now, that feels absolutely impossible. I get it. I'm not here to change your mind, but I am here hopefully offering just a little seed to be planted on this remote possibility that maybe, just maybe, we can discover hope again. And when things happen like this, whether they are on a very personal level, within our families, within our community, or on a global level, we get to choose what we do with it. And it feels so out of control and so terrifying, but we have choice. And the choice I am making with it is that I'm not going to lose my hopefulness. I will not stop believing that light conquers dark, that dawn always breaks and the sun always rises. I won't do it. And my hope is for all of you listening that I'm sure are hurting in a million different ways for a million different reasons that you don't let your light go out because we need your light. Your light offers something unique that I don't have. You have a gift that you bring to this world that I don't have. You bring a perspective to this world that I don't have. And that if your light goes out and you cease to bring those gifts and those beautiful, beautiful perspectives and energy to the world, we will all suffer. So I, I just, I just hope so much that even if you can't make sense of what's happening around you, you still let that glimmer of hope exist so that it can grow stronger as you heal, as we heal, that we can get back what we need because we didn't let go of it during the pain. We can get back our brightness, our connection, all of those things because we didn't let go of that in the process. So... I guess the piece that I want to really convey is that obviously I had such an amazing time during the retreat and I shared it with you guys. So you're now well aware of it. But I think that my biggest takeaway is I don't want that to end, right? Like my cup was so filled up by interacting with those women and seeing them and the beautiful work that they did that I don't want to just give that all away. I want to hold on to it as long as I can. And the ways that I hold on to that that connection, that healing that took place was by being able to continue reflecting on it, by being able to make choices because I experienced it, right? I think that experiencing what happened over the weekend and then obviously with the, the Vegas shootings happening just so, you know, within hours afterwards, 10 hours after we wrapped, there's a part that says, well, I can't hold on to the goodness anymore, This horrible thing's happened, and so I can't hold on to the goodness anymore. But the truth is, you have choice whether or not you hold on to the goodness. You have choice whether or not you hold on to hope. You don't have choice of whether or not somebody tries to steal hope from you, but you have choice of whether or not you let go of it. And if it feels too dark to hold on to hope right now, if the pain is too much for you, hand it to a friend, hand it to somebody that you love and you trust and you respect, hand it to somebody so that they can hold it until you're ready to take it back. But hand it to somebody safe. Don't give your hope to somebody that's not worthy of it. It's too big of a risk of what they could do with it, right? So I encourage you, make a choice about holding onto your hope. Because when you hold onto your hope, you can make deliberate actions around it, right? You can make deliberate choices around healing and connection and encouragement and all those sorts of things when you hold on to it. When you give it away, when you just throw it away and say there's no hope left, right? It's all hopeless. There's no point. When you give all that away, the problem is, is that you then start making choices that become almost justified because you feel so hopeless, right? Like I can be a jerk. I can, I can be impatient. I can be cruel. I can be angry. I can be mean. I can be all those sorts of things because who cares? Life is hopeless. And so 
oh gosh, it's so crazy right now. I don't know if you can hear it, but the chimes, there's a church right across the street from my office and the, the chimes are ringing right now. And for me, when those bells ring, right, when church bells ring, when a clock tower rings, there's, sen- there's a sense of like a gathering, right? All right, the church bells are ringing. The clock tower is ringing. Everybody come together, gather here. I'm letting you know, gather here. And so to be talking about this right now and this, this need to hold on to our hope and to, to extend that arm, to extend that within our communities and within our relationships and within our households and to have those bells going off right now saying, everybody come gather, gather around. The time is now. The time is now for healing and for connection and that my little glimmer of hope and your little glimmer of hope can make a stronger glimmer of hope, Right. Oh, I have chills. I, it's just, that is what's happening right now. There is a calling for all of us to gather and to lean on each other. And if your hope is getting diminished, I so encourage you. I so encourage you to see if you can have somebody else hold it just for the time being so that you don't let so let go of it so much that you start justifying the dark or you start making choices that don't align with who you are in this world. So that's it, my friends. The week after the shine retreat is still a heavy one, but one that I'm not willing to let go of the brightness I witnessed. I'm not willing to let go of the connection and the hope and the healing that took place. And despite the tragedy that happened hours after we wrapped, I'm still not letting go of it. And I hope that you don't let go of it either. Thank you so much for letting me into your worlds, into your hearts. I look forward to connecting with you all next month as we move into our new theme. And I just wanted to say thank you. And thank you for the hope that you're holding on to. It means the world because you are so magnificently important. Take care, ladies. Want to learn about the latest retreats, workshops, and speaking events hosted by Anna? Head over to HerLifeUnscripted.com to get in on all the juicy details. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and review the podcast so we can continue to grow our amazing audience. Lastly, be sure and send in your voice feedback via the SpeakPipe app or to Anna at HerLifeUnscripted.com. We can't wait to hear from you.